What's going on? This is Marcus and in today's video we're going to talk a little bit about the stocks that I'm thinking about purchasing this month for my newly created investment portfolio uh, that I do a recap on at the end of every month. Before we dive in, if you're interested in following my debt-free journey, learning about finances, I definitely invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button because it'll definitely help the channel grow. Now, I had to move these computers out of the way. You see, I try to do it on the low ski. <laughs> now, again, just to give a recap, because I don't want to put a link in here to get anyone up to speed, but just to give a recap, I get about $300 a month in discretional money that I can spend on whatever I want. Now, oftentimes I use that money to cover, you know, vehicle repairs or anything that maybe pops up. But I save a lot of that money because I'm not doing much because of Rona. I'm just kind of chilling. And so with that in mind, I decided in 2021 to use some of those monies to invest uh, every month so I can track the progress and, you know, do a monthly update as to the progress and we can see what we turn out at the end of the calendar year. Uh, in addition, we also use our cash back rewards to invest as well. That ranges from $75 to $100 a month. So we're looking at potentially between $300 of my personal money and about $75 to $100 of our cash back rewards that could be invested moving forward in the investment portfolio. So let's go ahead and dive into the stocks that I'm looking at giving. I am an attorney, but I'm not your attorney, and I'm definitely not a stock expert, so I'm just telling you the stocks that I'm looking at. I wouldn't advise anyone to purchase anything that I may be thinking about purchasing. I definitely recommend everyone doing their own independent research and not just listening to some random guy on YouTube talk about finance. Now, <laughs> let's go ahead and dive right in. The first stock that we're going to look at is Carnival. Carnival is a really interesting stock. If we look at Carnival's uh, pre-coronavirus numbers, the stock was ranging between $65 to $69 per share. Now here's where things get interesting. Currently, Carnival stock is selling for $29 a share. Carnival stock does pay a dividend. The dividend is about $0.50 cent per share. But the interesting thing is that uh, as we move forward in this pandemic, as the logistics with regard to vaccine distribution continue to improve, more and more people are getting vaccinated, states are starting to open up. I definitely expect the restriction, uh, the, the restrictions on public gatherings to go away. So I think that the cruise line industry, Carnival, Royal Caribbean is going to be a big player. Uh, in addition, these uh, companies, when I took a look at their financial reports, these companies do have a lot of cash on hand. They don't carry a lot of debt. So I think it's a good opportunity to purchase at the $29 range. If I purchase it, I could hold it. And if it's a long-term hold, these stocks will likely reach pre-pandemic rate in an 18 or 24 month period. And I can just say through personal conversations and talking with persons, I know at least five people offhand who have purchased uh, cruises for this upcoming year. So people are ready to get out. I think the Carnival, the Royal Caribbean, those type of things are going to be a really big market where you can see some increases in the stock. So that's stock number one that I'm looking at buying. Carnival is one that I'm definitely looking at. It pays dividends and it does have some potential for growth as a long-term hold. Now the next stock that I'm looking at is AT&T. I talked a little bit about AT&T uh, when I did my closeout video where I recapped and talked a little bit about what's in these portfolios. Again, AT&T is a blue ship company. It's been around for a while. AT&T has a large share of the communications market. I believe it was 40 to 45 percent of the communication market is controlled by AT&T. In addition, I think the other thing that was intriguing about AT&T is AT&T appears primed to make a lot of revenue off of the HBO and HBO Max app. They own those companies through their Warner Media Group. Um, a lot of movies that would normally go straight to theaters have been coming out on HBO Max, so people are really making a big dive to purchase HBO Max, in turn AT&T. And so the other thing that's quite interesting is AT&T's financial report will be coming out in April. And this is where it will get interesting because uh, if the revenue from HBO Max is higher than expected or meets the levels of expectations, there's a good likelihood that this stock can catch a bump 
from this $29 range. Now, I will tell you as a long-term hold, I wouldn't bank on AT&T reaching you know, $100 in the next 18, 24 months. That's just not what this type of stock does because it's a long-term blue chip stock. Uh, I, I just think in the long run, it's stable. They have a good dividend turnout. They've been paying dividend for 35 years and that dividend's been increasing over time. So that's where I think the value comes in with AT&T. The next stock that I'm considering is ACMC. Mm. See, I said ACMC. Man, I'm tripping. <laughs> the next stock that I'm looking at is AMC stock. And no, this isn't the GameStop Wall Street Vets. I really think AMC has a lot of potential because right now it's trading for under $10 per share. If we look at the stock value prior to the pandemic, the stock price was between $29 to $32. Again, the same with Carnival. I think with the restrictions being eased up, I think with the logistics and distribution of the vaccine, I think people are itching to go out, itching to get back to normal, itching to get into the movie theater. So I think if you purchase at this under $10 rate as a long-term hold, I think it will be very advantageous for me. Uh, the other thing that's actually interesting is AMC, uh, when they had that whole Wall Street Vets game stocks over inflation, the company actually made enough money during that period where it could sustain itself in the event that restrictions were extended longer than expected. So I think that's a plus. They do have some surplus cash on hand. And also I did some open source research and you can see that the, 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 the players at AMC, the CEO, the board of directors, they're holding on to their stocks. It's not a big sell-off. They're holding on to it. All those to me point to signs that this stock could be a great purchase at this price and there's really a, a great room for the stock to grow. In addition, unbeknownst to me until I really looked it up when I really purchased my first share of it uh, last month, AMC does pay dividends. It's definitely not a high yielding dividend. It's only about three cents per share, but there is, a, 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 there is an upside because there's a lot of growth in this stock that I think that could happen in the next 18 to 24 months. And, you know, some dividends is better than a stock with no dividends. But if you can get dividends and growth, that's a win-win. That's where I'm at on AMC. The last one is kind of unknown. It's called Genworth Financial Services. It's essentially a financial institution out of Virginia. They're actually, they've actually delved into the insurance game. So they're looking at life insurance, annuities, rental insurance, uh, PMI insurance. And they're also considering looking at becoming a loan servicer for mortgages. And so essentially when you have a loan servicer, that potentially could bring a large amount of profits in and revenue in because when you have a loan servicer, a lot of loan services engage and you all know if you have a mortgage and your mortgage was sold from Quicken Loans to another financial institution or another servicer, but what happens is a company starts engaging in servicing rights and then they'll actually purchase a collective group of mortgages from another service or company, they'll sign what's called an assumption assignment agreement and they take over those loans and begin servicing those loans so they can create revenue. Right now, their stock is only $3.33 per share, but it's one that I'm mulling over. Those are essentially the stocks that I'm looking at picking up this month with my $100 stock investment challenge. <laughs> uh, I will tell you on the cryptocurrency side of the game, it's either gonna be Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Litecoin. Um, I'm not sure which one this month, but those will be the, the, the three that I'm looking at. Um, and my last option with regard to stocks was to just hold on to the $100, uh, wait until next month when I have an additional $100 to add on top of that, and I can purchase some Apple stock. As we all know, Apple, all y'all probably watching this on your overpriced, overhyped Apple phones now, but Apple, whatever they put their finger into or dip their toe in, it seems to do outstanding. Um, right now, I personally think that this tech market is going to continue to have a little bit of a downturn. So I think in the next 60 days, you could potentially get in for lower than what Apple is currently selling at. So that's really one of my thoughts. I can just hold off on investing this month and then next month purchase a share of Apple. The other thing that really intrigues me with Apple is uh, Apple... Uh, hired a, a gang of a gang of scientists. They had a gang of a, a whole bunch of engineers to kind of work on their concept of electric vehicles. That looks like it's an arena that they definitely want to get heavily involved in. Uh, right now, and I said this before, Tesla stock was overrated. We see it went from selling something down to five something, and now it's trading at about 600 and some change. 
But uh, the reason Tesla stock was so high, like I said in another video, was that it was based off the assumption that 2025, Tesla will hold 35 to 40 percent of the electronic car market share. I'll be shocked to see that happen. I think Apple, I think GMC, I think Ford, I think companies in China are just going to, you know, catch up and get up to speed with the electric vehicles. Uh, Tesla still probably have the name power, but I don't know if they'll control as much of the market share. So I'm really thinking about uh, holding off to potentially purchase a share of Apple next month and maybe do that uh, in increments going forward. That's all I have right now. That's what I'm mulling over at the end of the month when I do the update on where all the emergency funds and sinking funds and the investment portfolio is. I'll get everyone up to speed on what I purchased, what I purchased it for, and how the value of these portfolios is turning out. I appreciate you all tuning in. Again, y'all take care. Be blessed. Peace.